If you add to a loser long, you get punished nearly every time. Mm-hmm. When you add to a short, when you're down, and you add to a loser when you're short, you, you very often get rewarded. <laughs> and, f- and you don't just get rewarded, you, you'll have your biggest win of the week or your biggest win of the month. Because not only did you build your position size, when that snaps, you've got a, you've got a higher average and more downside. So Nothing. That, that encourages Nothing. people to do that then. That, and then that you get more size you, and more size and more size and you win and win and win and win. You, until... you get a dopamine hit. Welcome to the Steady Trade Podcast. I am your host, Stephen Johnson, with the veteran Tim Bowen and Kim and Curtin by your side for a, a very hot and commonly discussed topic, something that Tim Tim will get asked about, something that will be kind of a potentially a heated deb- debate. Uh, it's the fact that when you start trading, should you go long? Because a lot of a lot of like Tim Sykes and the challenge, Tim Bowen and Pro. They promote that you should start by going long, despite the fact that there's actually a st- statistical edge on going short and on the fact that all of these Twitter people who are making the big amounts of money, a lot of them are making bank on the short side. Looks like Tim is shaking his head about that. <laughs> Tim is already uh, already on fire. Uh, so, I mean, great question. Actually, Stephen, you chose this topic and I thought it was great because, I mean, it, it seems so, I mean, again, listen, most, I always, I seem to, you know, I, I frame this every podcast, but I mean, you're probably here because you're new. Okay. And, and thank you. Welcome aboard. And, you know, there, there's, you know, I say, listen, I say this all the time. I'm like every penny stock fails, you know, you know, I've got my elf mask, you know, um, you know, Alf was incredible from whatever two dollars to seventeen. Now it's going back to two dollars, and people are like, "Wait, wait! How can you say the best trade, you know, is a red to green or a dip and rip or an afternoon VWAP hold or or a, a fifty-two week break on on this stock that you keep saying is the worst stock in the world and is going to fail?" Mm-hmm. I so so this is where I think I'm misunderstood. I agree with that statistical you know, that stat. I mean, they're all going to fail. There's been like two penny stocks that have, you know, quote unquote worked and become listed stocks and are still around years later, but where the newbies, and then that's not a derogatory term. We're all new at anything with anything you start, you should always be trying new things by the way, but um, you're always a newbie at everything. It's one of the best ways to learn and grow and evolve and be, stay humble, you know, try hard shit. Try, try stuff you don't know how to do. That's It keeps you in that that beginner's mindset, which is a great book that Steve Jobs recommends. But um, recommended, now he's dead. But anyway, um, you know, there, there, there is truth in that. All of these stocks fail. But it doesn't matter if you blow up from point A to point B. And, you know, I draw that line all the time. You know, I, I always talk about that, the traditional penny stock pattern. You know, this is pre-2020. You know, the, the traditional penny stock pattern was that huge spike, that huge fail over a three-day period. We always used to talk about the three-day rule. I don't even know if anybody, you know, yeah, younger than not me, anymore, younger right? than me day, even day knows three? the three. <laughs> uh, day three, it comes down, right? Or is day three is the last day? day three yeah, day three, is the, the day three is the day you hammer it. It fades yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you, you go you go max BP short, you know, because it's all lose. old. And you never lose. <laughs> In the old days. In the olden days. <laughs> what what do you think's the confusion then, Stephen? What's the confusion that well I was confused have? I was confused when I when I first got into the challenge and I first got into Stocks the Trade Pro, I was like, why are these why are these guys why are these guys uh teaching long strategies when shorten's easier and got a statistical edge? It just it just didn't make uh sense and then, well, and, and and then again, would... it, it does make sense I, you know again i'm a you know this is where we agree you know if you look at 
you know, and, and this is where, you know, you look at a daily chart, look at, and, and I tell everybody, look at the daily chart, you look at a daily chart of any penny stock. It's just this, and, you know, and, and you're like, well, then you just short them all. Short all of them, you know? <laughs> no, but do you know, do you know, do you know where, where the problem is? Um, I think shorten, I think I've got to be careful with what I say here, but I think shorten is, I think it's a shortcut to short-term success. I think if you've been struggling in the market for a year and you can't get going long, what everyone does is go short and get it straight away. But that doesn't mean you're going to have success because, and the difference is, is shorten is reacting to something that's already happened where when you're going long, you're predicting the unknown to an extent you're predicting something that hasn't happened. Whereas shorten's more reacting and anyone can react, but not everyone can predict predicting going long predicting is a skill. It's honed over months and years of chart time. And it, once you learn to predict accurately, you've got like 1% risk, 2% risk. If it dips, you're not adding because they can go lower. But when you shorten, it's it's easier to react, but it's very difficult to really fine tune that skill as well. So in my opinion, shorten is easy because it, it works until it doesn't right it works until one of them blows you up and you can have an 80 percent win rate think that you've got it and then what one of them blows you up see and you, and you know that and you've seen that i mean you, you i mean i mean and listen i don't want anybody to fail i get you know listen, I, I i i want eight billion people on the planet to succeed but you know you've seen that steven i mean it's like you see these people that i mean and legitimately i mean i mean they have ridiculous win rates and then poof like pixie dust they disappear and again, as a newbie, you're like, well, how did they blow up? How did they disappear with a ridiculous win rate? But but I, I think the question is, and these days the market seems as long biased as it seems more long. It's harder for shorts than it's ever been ever before. It was much easier a few years ago. But <laughs> but but I just want to say you can my friend, you what, if I could is, only give you a time machine to 2007 to 2013, my friend. Shorten was easy. If I if I could give you if I could give you that six-year period, Stephen. Stephen, you would probably, with your strategy, I'd be a millionaire. from two, a billion, from 2007 to 2013. But 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 the way I see short and versus long is you can either spend four years learning how to predict long patterns and mastering them, or you can spend four years learning how to manage risk on the short side. Because short and technically, it's not as difficult. I think it but it's harder to handle your emotions, manage risk. And you have to take those big losses to learn. You have to, but you don't take those big losses on learning the, on the long side as much. Well, and I think that's the crux of it. And I think that's why so many get in trouble is going back to what Stephen and I are saying is, I think that's what gets people in trouble too. And, and let me know if you agree, Stephen, is, you know, when you're twisted, you know, you're going for that ride, as Stop. we like to say, you keep telling yourself, well, 90% fail. You know, and, and it's like, well, 90 percent fail, 90 percent. And then and then you look at the filings. You all we, you know, oh, you know, there's a shelf registration, you know, yeah. and, then, and then you go to Twitter and everybody's calling it a scam and everybody's saying this. And, you know, and, and I think that that statistic, that stat that we're, that is probably going to be the name of this episode is what keeps people in terrible trades because they, you know, you're sitting there with the puke bucket, as I like to say, you know, and you're like, well, they all fail. Blah! They all fail, Blah! you know, and, and you, and then you continue to go for that ride. So yeah, here's and, a and question. Here's a question. It, aren't you though, because of what you said before, Steve, now predicting longs, aren't you also having to predict though shorts? No, nah, because with, with with longs, you're predicting the, the the best entry for a stock that may may or may not go. It, the stock may or may not run. You're predicting which ones will and when the best time to get in is. So that's quite quite predictive. But with shorten, you're reacting to when it's up too much. Mm. That's it. It's it's gotcha. it's up too much now. Gotcha. But the thing is though, if you're going long and it fails, you're not thinking better buy more. It's definitely going to come up after this. Like you're not going to do that because 90% fail. But when you're short, the, I have cried on the podcast before, but I'm, I'm faking tears. <laughs> my boy's but, all grown up. But no, but, but when my, you're my short, boy's you're, all grown up. He's proud of you right now, Steven. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's took five. And, and the, and the thing is the, the toughest thing is, there's a lot of stocks these days that don't die. Um, 
they don't die. A lot of stocks don't die now. They don't follow that formula of three days and die. Um, what, what did you? Uh, what what alpha, happened alpha, for you? Alpha is an example. Alpha what might happened? not even be dead. Might what come happened back. for you? What do you lost, feel? Lost loads of money. Okay. So, so and what aha moment is hitting you now? Uh, it's no, nah, it's nothing. I mean. I still don't have discipline. We talk, we, we spoke to uh, Brian Lee and he doesn't have discipline. You've just got to have max losses on your brokerage accounts. But the, so I haven't really learned anything. I've just learned how to be more patient over the years through taking bad losses. That's it. And I can technically read charts and I know some of the traps before I get trapped. Like ENTX today on, on, on the 23rd of June, I was in it. I still lost a thousand dollars on it. And I was tweeting live for a straight half an hour saying, this is going to ruin me. And, and, and I, even when it was falling, I'm saying, I don't believe the fall. I'm still going to get ruined. And then I got ruined. Like I just, I just knew it and I still fell for the trap. But, um, but what I want to talk about is the, impo- the thing is a lot of millionaires are monster short sellers making millions of dollars, sometimes in a single day. And the important thing to explain okay. is most traders don't have the account to make those millionaire short positions because a millionaire can withstand a hundred percent drawdown. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, most, most traders can't. And that's even if you can get the account to short in the first place, uh, because most conks, it's like a 30 K minimum. So the, the, the pathway to, to trading the ideal pathway is to learn along. There's less risk. You can, you lose less money. You can, you can really do it in a smaller size with any broker. There's no borrow fees. And once you've mastered long, you, you can make a hundred grand. Say once you're up a hundred grand in the markets, then you can start saying, all right, I'll short this with five. I'll short this with a $5,000 position. And if I go a hundred percent down, I'm only down five grand. And that's, that's only, it's, it's, it's a one twentieth of me account or whatever it is. And that's the difference. So I've got a question for you. So many of you know my, you know, you know, basically the way I approach social media, and this is where I, you know, I rant and I post my memes and I scream at people and 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 post videos with assault rifles and handguns and 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 bows and arrows and I haven't done it. I need to do some explosives. I haven't done explosives yet. So. Um, if anyone is with the ATF, please close this episode. Um, but so what the way I approach social media is I assume I default to the assumption that someone on any social media, Twitter's the worst, but any of them is again, (laughs) that, that newbie trader. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they're on there looking for, you know, listen, Warren Buffett, Paul Tudor Jones, aren't going to Twitter to be like, Hey, what should I trade today? Okay. They are. Okay. It's, it's newer traders. So I default to the assumption that it's Joe or Jane public that are new to this. So that is how I approach my advice, my recommendations, my ranting. So my question for you is Steven, why do these multimillionaire quote unquote, big swinging dick short sellers go on social media and talk to a bunch of newbies. Like this is the best thing to do. You're an idiot. If you don't short penny stocks, you can, you can't get like me unless you short. Why do they do it? Why do they drive me insane? Why do they make me bald? Why do they make me, you know, angry? Why do they turn my beard gray? Why do they do it? I mean, uh, if, if someone's selling the service, then they're selling the service. That's, that's obviously one option. But if, the, if they're not selling the service and they've just, it's just to show off and look good. But I mean, it's because their mother and their, their, they probably didn't have a father and their mother hated them. That's why. But it's like, it's and they're like, looking look, for, they're, this is Kim's department. They need validation. But like, look, I'm and they not go, and they go to Twitter and they need, they, they, here they are big, badass short seller and they need validation from Joe or Jane with a $500 account. No, but I mean, look, I'm not saying it's bad to only be short because I'm predominant. Like, it's funny because I'm talking to Alex Self. Remember Alex Self? He was, mm-hmm. he was sure. up a lot and then he, he actually doing? blew. 
How's he good? Doing? Good. We're both like we're both up. I think similar amounts now. Okay, um, he, he blew it, and then he's he's made a lot a lot of it back. Me and him were just chatting the other day, being like, "I'm like, how's it going?" He's like, "Short and hard." I'm like, "Yep." Yeah. He's I was like, "Are you learning long?" He's like, "Yep." Yeah. <laughs> like me too. <laughs> so like we're both, but I'm not against being purely short. I'm not, and I think you can make a lot of money being purely short. And, and I've learned how to trade being purely short, but I'd lost twenty five grand learning, like because I blew up a bunch of times. I made it all back, but you have to have money behind you to blow up a lot to, to learn what to do. Yeah. So, but I'm See, not against that, you know, being again, purely short. That, that is, you know, there's, there's so many, you know, again, well done with this, Stephen, you know, it's like, again, that's my point. If I had to summarize, you know, five years of ranting, you know, it's just <laughs> that it, it goes back to your point where if you've got a million dollar account and you're down 50 grand, it air quotes does not matter. But if you've got a $5,000 account and you're down 4,990, it matters. It matters, you know, so. Yeah, it's like, but it's also like you can short, but just just know that you might blow up a few accounts. That's all. Like, it's it's fine. It's totally fine Agreed. to go only Agreed. on the yep. short side. I'm as not long as you go in knowing short. that, you know, as long as you but go just, in knowing that. Just know that you might blow up more accounts learning than if you're going long. Because I don't want to be anti-short because I've came up exclusively short and only now I'm learned the best way to be is to go both ways. Yes. Yep. In every kind of way. Um, but specifically with stock trading, it's good to go both ways and take take it long and take it short. I mean, look, imagine you rode TRCH up and then you shorted it down. Imagine you rode ALF up. And then you hit that first red day today on the 23rd of June. I was scared of it's it. It's down 70% somehow, right now. <laughs> somehow I hit ANTX. I was scared of ALF and somehow ANTX was okay. <laughs> Short, but I was scared of ALF. God knows why, but. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you know, you should be. It's, it's, it's day eight for ALF. So go ahead, Kim. Sorry. What What do you feel, Stephen, if you could go back in time and tell yourself when you started, what is it you would try to get across to yourself? I mean, I, uh, I wouldn't do anything different because I've, I've, once you've made it, whichever, not that I've made it, but like once you've got a consistent income over a few years from trading, what that's what I call making it. Once you've made, what made it as a consistently profitable trader, I wouldn't change anything. Um, but it's tough. It's, you've got to have the right broker. And I think in America, it's, it's tough. I mean, for me, I was abroad as international so i could like short with a 600 dollars account yeah so that that made shorting easy for me and it's mm -hmm. not easy for everyone yeah but um but i, I wouldn't I, I would have told myself to i wouldn't have told myself anything because i think you should master one pattern i master one short pattern and then master another pattern and it makes sense to master a second short pattern if the first short pattern worked but then maybe i should have started learning longs earlier because i'm behind on them mm -hmm. that's that's all you know, and Kim, this is, so this is a question for you, Kim. So, or, 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 or I guess I, maybe not a question, but I'll allow you to comment. See, and, and, and I know you understand this, but you know, the thing is, and listen, you can, and this is where, again, I, people, you know, they're like, oh, you can lose all you blow up going long. And I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But the difference with, with, with losing a lot of money going long is it typically, and we'll see if Stephen agrees or disagrees. I mean, unless, you, unless you're a complete idiot and you're buying stocks up 400% on the day, the, the, the idea is if you're long bias, it's going to take exponentially longer to blow up your account. It's going to take yeah. weeks and months, you know, $50, $100, 50. And, you know, the, the problem with when you're short, these stocks, you know, these, these insane stocks, you, I mean, minutes, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, Steven's yeah. been there. I mean, I mean, you, you took like a $20,000 loss the other day. How long did it take? 10 minutes? No, no, it took, it took a good, it took a good uh, seven or eight hours to lose that. Okay, but thousand. still, my point is, <laughs> it's still, I mean, so it's a lot of money to lose in an hour. Is it like fast food? <laughs> no, but I, I've been down five grand in minutes. I've right, been down right. five grand in two minutes. Yeah. So that's but my I, point, Kim. You know, but you can make a lot is, of money fast. So yes. it's like fast food. You can, you can, but you're not getting yeah, nourished. Long is as well. Yeah. Long okay. is super fast. If you, if you'd hit Alf at, at that, at that uh, VWAP, VWAP reclaim, you make thousands and minutes. But, but my point, so, so sorry. I mean, I kind of bounced all over. My point is like, Kim, for somebody listening, I mean, you, you have to be 
aware of your faculties, I guess I would say. You have to be, you know, aware of what is happening to you emotionally because it's really easy. And I've been there, okay? When, listen, I've doubled down on shorts going against me on accident. And I'm like, and I just, I closed it. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't watch. I'm like, I'm just gonna, I, I, I left. I mean, this is like yeah. 10 years ago. I doubled down on, I can't, that was- stocks, stocks probably delisted. I meant to cover and I, I meant to cover and I'm panicking. I doubled down and I'm like, and I'm like, I just closed and I left. Yeah. And, but by the way, and I was down like 10 grand and I came back and I was down like eight and I was like, yeah, woohoo! But, but it we worked. Were, but Tim, we were talking to Brian Lee about we this, were, right? We were. There's a point in trading, right? There's a point in trading where, because you, you've got your max losses and stuff, but there's a point in trading when you go short where you're down 20 grand and you just think, do you know what it is? I'll come back tomorrow. What, whatever happens, happens. If I lose that, 40, I lose 40. You just don't care. Amazing, you just don't like care. I, said, I don't know why. I, I think I was down like 10 and I came back after the close. I was like, fuck but it. What I could you have it. lost though? You could have just blew your account. Oh yeah. I, I, what what probably, was your account? Probably could have lost 200 grand. 200 no, grand, you know? stop it. If I mean, if it, I mean, obviously if it went up. With that, it uh, wasn't going to though, but you could have blew. You yeah. could have blew I mean, exponentially theory, above. Theory. Yeah. So but, but, but my point is, I get back at like 401 and it, and I, and I end up with an $8,000 loss and it was a win. I was like, I was like, yeah, I did the right thing. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's a lesson that you learn. I mean, look, the, 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 the problem is if, if you add to a loser, right, this is the main thing. If you add to a loser long, you get punished nearly every time mm-hmm. when you add to a short, when you're down and you add to a loser, when you're short, you you very often get rewarded. <laughs> And, f- and you don't just get rewarded. You you'll have your biggest win of the week or your biggest win of the month because not only did you build your position size when that snaps, you've got a you've got a higher average and more downside. So Nothing that, that encourages Nothing. people to do that. Then that and then that you see, more size you, and more size and more size and you win and win and win and win. You, until, you get a dopamine oh, hit kibble. each of those and, times, and, Steven, and then you're like, that's the only way to go. You know, dangerous. You know, Very back. dangerous. Back to what, you know, again, what makes me balding more every day on social. I mean, Stephen, you've seen them. You know, when people, you, I always love the charts that people post when it's just like the red triangles all the way up. And then you're like, and then they brag. And I'm like, <laughs> what, what? You're, you're telling me this was a good idea? You know, like say ENTX. And it's just red triangles all the way up. And, and it yeah. works like, I mean, e- listen, ENTX is back on the low of the day right now. If you add it all the way up, but you're posting that to social media again to these new people. And you're like, you're trying to tell uh, Joe and Jane that this is a good idea. But you know what? You know what I'll say, I, but I knew it was going to top there. I, I, I knew that was the top. I was just building in. I, I knew that was the top though. I've got data. That's the top. No, you didn't. No. You didn't know that was the top. You didn't know no. what hedge funds holding that up. How no. much of the floats bought up? When a chat room is going to come in? Did they actually when, say that? Did they actually say I knew where it was? How gonna... did Stephen and I just tell the identical story, Kim? But you I know mean, what you I don't say. No offense, but we, him and I. I mean, it's not like we planned this. He picked up right where I left off. Yeah, it was like I, I handed him it's the football. Common. <laughs> but you don't see that with longs. You don't see someone buying lower, buying lower, buying lower, no. buying lower. Ah, pops. That that is shunned. You are a bag holder if you buy lower and buy lower and up. You're a you're a terrible shit bag holder and a bad <laughs> trader. But if you add to those winners on the way up and you hit the top, ah, <laughs> we're good trader. Steven, it's every it's day, like every every day I like you a little more. I still love. It's like I still when don't like around you. I, 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 I still love you, but my likes. You know, I always used to say. <laughs> I don't like you, but I love you. But but they're, they're no, just starting love more unlikers. and more. I'm starting. To, yeah, I'm starting yeah, to actually like. Time. Good time, but Steven. you know, I know, I know, because I get more texts off you these days randomly through the day. I'm like, wow, he actually likes us now. It's like <laughs> only took us five years to get his trust and respect. Well, it's because before him, <laughs> you, you you quit with the with the drunk dials. I mean, I you, you haven't sent me that. a four a.m. I love you hearts and all this stuff. I thought in you a liked long those. Time. I thought you liked those. But can I just say, um, it's like when a man sleeps with a lot of women, he gets praised for it. And when a woman sleeps with a lot of men, she gets shunned. And it's the same thing as when a short adds to a loser and wins. It's like, ah, dude. That's like, 
Wow, 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 very trenches. sexist and will probably get us canceled. That's a great analogy. That's it's a great metaphor. It's, a, it's an objective like it. observation. I like it. I like it. It's good. <laughs> but uh, but like I say, I mean, Tim, could would you, if someone said, look, I just I just I understand the risks involved in shorting. I'm really working on risk management. I kind of seem to get longs, but shorting makes more sense. Would you then say, okay, try the short yeah. side? Would yeah. you tell them? Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. If I mean, if I believed him, okay. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, uh, but 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 if if I was sitting down with him and he said yeah. it the way yeah. you said or her, yeah. if they said it the way they said it, I saw him in the eye and I was like, you know, he she means it. I'd be like, yeah. do it, do it. Yeah. But I, but 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 you fr- you framed that question, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, should should be a journalist for someone. And a news report. No, but but, but, but yeah, I mean, if, if like if like someone said, "Hey Tim, you know, I'm working on my trade, and I'd like to have lunch with you, talk about my strategy." We sit down, I get to know them. I'm like, yeah, you know, they they they've spent the time, they've done the work, you know, they're serious about this. They're not trying to turn up, you know, a hundred dollars into a million this year. It's like they're, 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 I mean, like, you know, when, when we interview people, I'm like, man, you know, we'll get done. And I'll be like, man, that guy's got it. You know? And, and if, and if I had that feeling and they put it the way you put it, I'd be like, go for it. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's those guys who are like, show up late. Put put half an hour a day in. Ugh, I'm just yep. not getting longs. Just not getting longs. Short looks easy. Short yep. short short looks good. See a lot of people on the internet doing it. They make yeah, a lot yep. of money. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think do you think temperament and uh, kind of the way you view the world is going to be a big measurement around whether to decide to be a short trader or not? If you don't have a patient temperament i think you're trading tickets right so it doesn't matter whether they go up or down I, i'm I, like because mm. i know tim six used to be like oh if you're cynical on the world you'll be a short seller and if you've got a positive outlook on the world you'll be more long the way i see it is we're just trading four letter and four letter numbers words letters whatever doesn't matter whatsoever it's uh it's just if you go on it's just if you're going long it's like I don't know, like the people who go along, all the best people who are longs are just they're like really sick individuals, like sick in a good way, like like Matt Monaco, like Bryce Tui, Roland Wolf, Jack Kellogg switched long, but he was kind of long on the OTCs all along. All these guys are like little wizards. Mm. Um, and I think I think those are the guys who've just done the thousands of hours and chart recognition and pattern recognition. And they're, they're, they're the one that's got something hard at the nail first. Because long, long and for me, long and is still harder than shorten. Mm. I still think it is, although I'm starting to get long and more and more. How long have you been focused on being long? Is this just oh, since- like I'm a total degenerate? So like, I try to go short for I try to go long for six months. It didn't work, and like all the other degenerates, I was just like, <laughs> I'll just try it, try it short and lost for five years, and then after <laughs> after like three years of terribly losing, I, I I finally figured out parts of the market. But um, not a good case study. You know, like for me, I mean, and, and I know you know, I mean, you know, like Kim, I mean, and, and everyone yeah. just go go to the, my favorite episode. I've decided it is officially my favorite <laughs> with with the, the first episode with JJ with VWAP Trader. And the whole, yeah. I mean, I my whole story's right there. I'm just yeah. like, you know, you know, and, and remember when I joked earlier with Steven, I said 2007 to 2013. Yeah. Then, then 13 and 14 yeah. and 15 happened. And I'm like, it is different. And again, anyway, that story has been told. So yeah. it took me, yeah. took me years. I mean, yeah. ultimately it was like yeah. 13, 14, 15 before I was like, something changed, something yeah. changed here. So, yeah. But, well, do you know what? Just one last thing I'll say. And then the crazy thing is, as long as not as hot as I thought, right. All you need to do is buy breakouts, right. Multi-month breakouts on charts that have got histories of, big 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 volatile charts and uh and then like the one way to learn long that was good advice from dad irish that he gave me and i think price Tui as well he's just like whenever you see a big move just go back to the start and see where it happened and that's all you need to do try and be at the start of, of the big move so like if you have a multi-month breakout go back to the chart when it broke out and say what is the most ideal safest best entry to buy that keeps on happening and then i just started saying ah every time it you know like 
say a chart washes out, it happened with Alf, it happened with ENTX today, it washes out, consolidates, then you'll, you'll get that knee jerk up, you'll get that knee jerk, and then it'll pull, hold, and then go. Yep. And you'll know it, Tim, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like, and then once you've saw it once, I see it all the time, and I'm yep. thinking that's that's the time to go. Well, you, Someone you, with you, money's just pushed that in. You've you've mm-hmm. talked about it. I mean, we, we've texted about it all week on, on Alf and AMC. I mean, you're just like, what are these people talking about? All this style, I mean, it's just waiting to explode again. And they're like, yeah. oh, first red day, blah, blah. And it's like, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, it's a lot of shorts <laughs> who don't know what they're talking about. It's a lot of shorts who have been in the game a year being like, ah, oh, it's definitely coming down now. Why, 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 why is it definitely coming down now? Can you, can you like give us three reasons? Mm-hmm. Can you give us three reasons? And don't use up too much as one of them, right? That's, that's, the first, that's, <laughs> that's the first always rule. the, you can't <laughs> ever up, use. It's up a lot, it's up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you feel that when though you're a beginning trader and you're leaning towards always shorting things do you think you're just projecting what you want it to be on it and not really clear at what's happening like if one of their reasons is because it's up a lot that tells us like they don't maybe have the clarity that you uh, need to have it's a good enough reason a lot of the time i mean my first few mm-hmm. years trading i had a couple of months of profitable trading simply trading tim bone used to make jokes about is saying i just short everything anything that's up <laughs> like my only criteria for short stocks is that it was up wow <laughs> and there's and listen and he, he was serious as well yeah and and we won't name names but there's guys that are still doing that four years later you know yeah there's a, there's a lot of guys that if it's up if it's on your scanner and it's above 50 percent, 40 percent, that is a definite short Wow. regardless of any other criteria there's a lot of people still doing that wow. and it works it works it works if you just hold on to everyone until it comes down until Which... once a month you get the 300 percent and it blows you and that's that's, that's where that's where you can have a 90 percent win rate and be done you know? and post profits <laughs> every day look how yep, good i yep. am i'm really good <laughs> wow because you get a 90 percent win rate you know it's and like you win every day and, and every then, day you win until and you then nine, nine out of ten, and then the tenth day, you know what? That's the vacation day. You know, that's, that's the day that oh, things just didn't look right today. So then you're posting, you know, pictures of my ties at the beach. You know, <laughs> but but again, look. I'm and not, meanwhile, I'm, that same day, there's some two million floater that spiked at nine forty five, consolidated, ripped into the close, consolidated, and then blew up after hours. And that's the day that I'm chilling at the beach with the my ties. Coincidentally. But I just want to say I'm all for shorting. I'm all for shorting. I'm a short, 90% short. I'm just saying if you're a short seller and you identifying as a profitable one, I, I want to I want to see you successful for a year doing it. I want to see 12 months of consistent profits to identify as a profitable short seller, not not two weeks or a month. Awesome. I think it's awesome. I, I feel like you you like he was crying before, fake crying, but I it feels like something has shifted in you just in our conversations and it's like you my have- boys all grown up my boys all grown up really, I, I mean look I mean, it's maturity team. though it's just market maturity i've been i've been in this game for five years and you've seen you've seen every step of the journey yeah yeah from it's from impressive. from year one to year five it's all it's all on here on steady trades or youtube it's on both it's i've got three years on steady trade as well though we're yabbering on for hours and hours <laughs> it's impressive Steve and I'm excited for you I'm excited the way you're looking at it now and it, it just feels I mean you know just in the almost two years I've been here talking with you something's different something's I've, different the way I understand longs the way I understand risk management the way I've now got structural processes with brokers to stop max losses for happening mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to eat, I don't want to eat me words in a later podcast, but I feel really, really, really good about the year ahead or the next two or so three great. years. I feel really, really, really excited so and good. good. I'm excited for you. It's really cool. Love that. It's just, a, it's just a silence of appreciation. It is. It is. <laughs> so it's a one minute silence of just, I, I was trying, I, I wanted to make, cause I loved it. It's a sign of maturity, and I was trying to not interrupt for once, for the first time in two in two hundred. I wanted There's to make so much, sure so much transformation in one episode. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you finished your thoughts because I love it, and that way people can't say 
well, I still probably interrupted both of you 50 times this episode, but at least that one time in 250 episodes, I actually let you finish. There's not, nothing wrong with jumping in, though, because it means yeah. that you're so passionate. You're so passionate about the point you. that you have to get it out. That's all I'm it means. I, or am I, I steroids? It's just that you're fired up. <laughs> or, or it's the steroids and the caffeine. Maybe a little. If you've got some steroids, I'm coming out to America. Juice me up. Juice me <laughs> up. I'm ready. I'm already on trading steroids. I'm, I'm raring. <laughs> All <laughs> right, everyone. Ones. As always, thank you for listening to the Steady Trade Podcast. And, uh, you know, again, thank you, Stephen, for this topic. Um, I think if you yes. listen to every episode, you could have distilled, you know, yeah. where, where we kind of differed on this. But I'm glad we did this episode to kind of like consolidate it so that you didn't, you know, because we listen, we've had this probably episode one, we <laughs> argued about longs versus shorts, but this was a great way, you know, and especially like I mentioned, I'm glad you made that point in your opening statement mm-hmm. about that statistical average. Cause I think if there's one thing, you know, I, I know I already said it, but I think a lot of people that's where they get in trouble because they're just like all, all penny stocks fail, all penny stocks fail. I'm down five grand, all penny stocks fail. I'm down 10 grand, all penny stocks fail. So I think that that, that statistical point is, is great. So you got to understand that if they fail over, you know, like ALF, I mean, ALF will fail. I mean, ALF, it's June 23rd, 2021. If you're listening to this in July or August, it's probably all the way back where it was. Mm-hmm. But if it went from two to 20 and you're in it, it doesn't matter if it eventually fails. So, all right, everyone, as always, definitely head over to steadytrade.com. We'll link up everything, you know, like if we, as always, if we mentioned past episodes, you can Google around or you can go to steadytrade.com, go to the post and, and we'll link it all up right in the description. So thank you, Kim. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, thank you everyone. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Steady Trade Podcast.